Hello, it's another sim release and sort of dev log type update today. And I want to start a little bit differently by telling you something that didn't get in this release. This is the 0.44 alpha release. Um, but what it led to, because one of the things I mentioned last time is I wanted to concentrate on a fun feature like perhaps putting a plane into chase. And I started doing this. And I had help here with um, a, a guy that contacted me on YouTube called Drones and Whatnot, or Nathan, who did a bit of 3D modeling in his spare time and offered to do me some objects. So um, he created a, a plane. And this was interesting in the fact that going from uh, Fusion 360, as he was working on, into Unity created its own problems. For example, we lost the textures uh, to start with, and we also had issues with joints. So he created joints for the um, control surfaces, which were working fine in uh, Fusion 360. When I got them onto Unity, they used a different point as a pivot. So when I tried moving the surfaces, they were flying off at funny angles, but um, I eventually found I could create dummy parent objects to bring them in and change the pivot points. Bit manual, takes a little while, but uh, we got there in the end. And I immediately had some issues trying to work on a sort of AI controller to get these working. So I actually connected all this up to my radio um, and I released a, a little video on, on Instagram that I bought out just showing me flying this thing around. And it actually felt pretty good flying it around with the radio. And I thought, oh, maybe, maybe I can add this in as, as, as an option uh, and a, a few people got quite excited about the idea of a line of sight simulator for this but when I tried it on line of sight because I thought I'll, I'll, I'll do the code for it see how it feels it felt awful there, there was something very wrong with the way the plane was basically attempting to fly it's a very simple model it's actually a piece of code from unity that I modified into my own stuff and I decided I don't like the way it works at all. The whole, the way it does lift and things is completely weird. So the, the way it was flying under line of sight control just did not seem right to me. And I actually got it flying under an AI controller, but again, although I could go around and I could follow it, I wasn't happy with the way it flies. I'm not happy with the way it flies. Um, the, the speed, the way it doesn't, I had to favor your much more than roll because roll would do this all over the place. So. The plane is not going to be in this release. However, doing the development or trying to do development of the, the plane led me to a bunch of things that I thought would be good to fix and would really help out some beginners. And um, so along the way, when I was doing this, trying to help myself out, I, I figured actually I've got enough here to release to, to help other people out. So after I did line of sight for the plane, obviously this was easy to move across to the quad and one thing I did I, I shoved another little video on Instagram it's just my little fun thing to do to say hey look what I'm working on and I had the line of sight working what I found is the power things were too much although you guys gave me loads of feedback about it doesn't feel powerful enough like a quad and we, we got it to the fact that it did feel powerful enough you put this in a line of sight thing and with the extra gravity it something felt very wrong about it it was it was zipping up and it was falling down too fast um, and I realized that I had to make some changes and, and instantly I noticed I had a problem because um, my little font that shows the, the the rates and the gravity and stuff doesn't scale. And I'm working on a 5K monitor. So even if I have it at like 2K in a window, that font shrinks down so small, I can't see it. And I thought that's something I needed to change because I couldn't see the text clearly enough and I, it needs to scale up. Now, although I put yet another video out on Instagram just showing me flying around line of sight, I am not an acro line of sight flight. The only reason I go into line of sight is I'm testing out a quad, I just want to check it and hover and do a quick couple of uh, circles or something's gone wrong with my goggles, I have to recover it, line of sight. At that point, I flick into angle mode because I don't want to have to deal with, is the quad currently upside down at the moment or whatever? Because often when you're spotting it far away, you don't know the orientation and you want to be pressing forward and backwards and you're looking at how the quad reacts to decide which way it's facing to decide how to bring it back. Um, I don't need it going more than 20% and I thought to myself if people are starting out they don't necessarily want to start out flying acro in line of sight. I, I, I love acro, I, I recommend everybody learns to fly acro and FPV and don't touch self level but when it comes to line of sight flying I, I, I changed my tune there so I figured um, some sort of angle mode is going to be useful and being able to change those rates easier is going to be useful as well. So here's what I did. Let's um, start up the sim and I'll show you what we've got.
Okay, in the sim, the first thing you might notice is that the title text is a bit different. And what I did, uh, as I mentioned, I've changed this so it will scale, but I didn't want to bring it up all the time. So what happens now is if, for example, I, I want to change my camera angle, you'll, you'll see it appear on the screen there and then it will go away again. Ditto if you do anything with like the throttle multiplier or the gravity multiplier, um, that will go up and it, you, as you'll see it fade out later. And if you don't want to change stuff to see, if you just hit return, everything will appear there. Uh, so that's the first thing that, uh, that we sorted out. You'll also notice there we have a flight mode. Um, and yes, I implemented angle. And so if you press the M button, you'll see it flick between the modes there. So angle is just a, a very basic, you can go 20 degrees forwards, um, and then if you let go of the sticks, it will self level. However, in order to show you that, I put something else in. I put in um, a, a stick overlay. If you press D, you will see you've got sticks now. So if I move the sticks around, basically, so I don't have to do this and show you me doing this, I can just show you on the screen, which is better. So for example, if I put it in angle mode, and this is not for flying FPV, I have to tell you, I don't want to see people doing this. So don't do it. Let's turn the sound off. So yeah, if I go ahead and I just flick forward, you see me stop at 20 degrees, no matter what happens there. And if I let go, it, it just goes back again to the center, which is what angle mode is supposed to do. But the the reason I put angle mode in was for line of sight. So if you press L now, you're in line of sight mode. But the this goes hand in hand as well with a more important menu, which is the flight assist. So if I go uh, and press the A button, we go to this flight assist mode. So you see my uh, current rates here uh, are down as the, the normal 0.8 for uh, super rate and, and one for RC rate. What I've done, I've put in three types of pilots, beginner, intermediate, expert. Uh, expert is what the rates are now, my default rates. Uh, I don't view myself as an expert. This is just a sort of, I didn't know what else to put there. Basically, it's a very reactive quad. Beginner is a, a much more friendly thing. You'll see we got a, an RC rate of 0.5 a super rate of just 0.3 and an RCX birth 0.4, so it's quite quite generous on the sticks there. This goes hand in hand with the quad power, which is quite an important thing. This affects how the throttle multiplier works. So I've basically set this up so your your low power is effectively like a 3S quad. Um, don't be put off by the fact that, you know, well, I don't want to learn how to fly 3S. It's all about how gentle the quad's going to react and how powerful it's going to be. And if you are starting out, I really recommend it. And I'm going to I'm going to show you it now because this is exactly how I'm going to fly line of sight. So if we accept these, I'm keeping the overlays on so I don't have to keep holding this up. You'll also notice that we've got a small window over in the right hand side. So what I'm doing here, I'm just making sure I'm in angle. I've got that, I think I've put it on, haven't I? Yeah, I've got that simple rate on and I'm in angle mode. So what I'm just going to do is show line of sight flight. And all I'm going to do in order to fly this uh, because I'm in angle is I'm going to push forward on my pitch stick and I'm just going to use my your stick to move it around so what you can see in that little small window at the side there is this is if it goes a little bit out of range you're not sure of your orientation have a little glance at that window and it always shows the the zoomed in view so you can always see what you're doing uh, and get used to it so as I said, the only reason I generally fly line of sight is I'm testing out a new quad or something's happened. Let's say the quad's far in the sky. You can't really see what's happening. The way I would get it back is have it in self-level mode and I would do something with the stick and I'd see which way it reacts. And basically it's like, yeah, okay, I, I think if I pull back, it's coming back kind of towards me. And then I sort of bring it down that way. So that's kind of what I, I would encourage the use of both the self-level mode and line of sight mode to be used for. Of course, if you want to, you can fly an acro, you can take off, um, you can go up, you can practice flips. This is only an intermediate mode, so it's a little bit better. But yeah, you can you can get the hang of that. So we're back in acro mode, but still in this low power mode, because I just wanted to show you exactly what it was like. So if you're just starting out, the reason I recommend it so much is because basically um, beginners often they, they move their sticks a lot and if you move your stick a lot in a high rate you're gonna 
fall around on the floor and basically die. So you can see this one, I'm still showing you the stick here, but yeah, on the stick over there, you can see that that's being moved massively, but what's happening, you're not going too out of control, you're just able to do stuff. Um, and of course this means you can you can slam the sticks all the way over, nothing too bad's gonna happen. Um, and hopefully you'll get used to sort of finessing the sticks a little more. And of course, you can then, if you want to, you can increase your super rate manually that way, or you can go back into the flight assist menu and you might say, okay, I want intermediate rates now to see how that feels. And, and you will see you've got more sticks. So if you move it all the way then, you'll start going into a spin, but it's not too quick. So the, the idea is you will get the hang of how to move around and start putting in smaller little stick movements before you move on to a higher rate. The other thing um, a couple of guys picked up on is the race gates. They're saying the race gates are hard to get through, they're too small. In, in terms of how big they are, they are actually pretty big, but one of the problems I tend to think is that the angle of the camera, I've been unable to, at the moment to reproduce the distortion it has, which can make the gates look bigger. And that is in plan to do in terms of writing a shader to do that. However, I figured what is the point of delaying this when people are like struggling with it? So if you now press the G button, you go from gates to large to giant, and these are big gates. Um, and so anybody should be able to go through these. And I wanted to demonstrate that the combination of large gates with gentle rates is gonna is gonna do you pretty well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move over to this DualShock 4 controller just to show you that even with these horrible things that, that shouldn't be used for this, you can you can basically get it sorted. So I'm gonna go into the joystick setup to say I'm using a gamepad. This means that only the 50% above the zero um, will work. And then I'm gonna go up and set my rates to beginner, low, and choose gamepad. And I'm gonna try and see if I can fly using a DualShock 4 controller through the giant gates, which I'm hoping should be okay. It's still um, a weird little controller to, to use, especially for this. And you can see how much input I'm putting in because the, the sticks are so small, but you know, you can fly through them um, without too much of a hassle using the giant gates. You will notice the giant gates look very close together because they are now so big. Um, one of the things I thought about doing, having having messed around with the gates and stuff, is perhaps I do need to put a few more courses in. I mean, this this wasn't ever designed to be a racing simulator. There's there's loads of simulators that are going to do a far better job for that. But um, yeah, it looked a little bit crushed in, didn't it? To be fair, so maybe I, I'll sort something out from that. But yeah, you know, at least this I think lets a beginner go in and do stuff because they can use just a game controller and they can slam these sticks around because they are very small. It doesn't take much to slam them and they won't go crazy out of control like they would do with the, the regular rates. You will probably be thinking, oh, he's put angle mode in, where's Horizon? It's not there. There is a reason for this. I did have it in there and then I found out there was something called gimbal lock, which happens if you're using these Euler angles. I think I'm pronouncing that right. I'm gonna put it on screen. Um, and if you, get into this situation you can have this thing called gimbal lock which essentially is if you imagine there's these three axes which all cross each other they could come together and then one axis moving affects the other and in my situation what i was having is i could roll the quad over and it would come back but if i pushed it forwards and i let go of my roll stick when i got to about this angle the roll suddenly thought it was at a different angle and so the self level kicked in so what i ended up with is at this angle roll was spinning around uncontrollably, which was interesting. I now think I can get around this using something called a quaternion, I think that's the right way, which doesn't suffer from gimbal lock, or I sort of work out what my roll and pitch are as I'm going. However, there, there are a few things to consider. So I was just imagining the situation, say I've got my quad here and I'm pitching over, so my pitch is now 180 degrees. If I was, to sort of record what my pitch was, but then I roll out of that, my roll would then be at sort of negative 180 and my pitch also at negative 180. So the thing thinks it's completely upside down because I've pitched one way and rolled the other. So the question of 
if you are upside down and at this point both axes are round the wrong way, which way do you go? Which might mean that I don't bother with Horizon because I don't really see the point of it as far as a sim goes, but I might give it some more thought, I don't know. Just editing this video and I forgot to mention something so I'm just inserting it here and that is that I reset the gravity back to 1.0. It was previously at 1.55 but having tested it in line of sight mode it really did feel like it was too heavy. Of course if you feel it's too floaty adjust gravity to your liking. I, I'm not here to tell you how to fly it. It's, it's here so you can set up all your settings as you want to. The only issue I've seen so far with the gravity has been with the cars so if you do the chasing of the cars and this is especially relevant on the larger circuits where you're using the fast cars they tend to be a little bit more out of control than normal they're always a little bit reckless which is how i wanted it but you you might find that they spin out a bit easier they don't handle the jump so well obviously you can just whack the gravity up and they'll come back to normal um, i'm gonna do some changes for the next version to make sure they're a little bit more predictable in in how they work and don't just endlessly crash into each other fun as as it may be just that little note there but generally speaking I, I do recommend we keep the gravity on one just because it's how things should happen but completely down to you yeah so that's it for the 044 release and most of those fixes i was doing along the way of trying to get planes working so for next time i'm basically going back i'm throwing away the demo code that Unity had and I'm writing my own plane controllers um, and AI script to make it fly uh, a bit more reasonably. Uh, again, I don't want to get bogged down in the physics of fly and how it works exactly. My, my general idea is to fake it um, as nicely as I can with it looking and feeling correctly. But um, aside from the fact that I want to chase them around, that, that it, if I get it working nicely there there will be perhaps a future option to fly planes as well but I don't want to get too ahead of myself now. So the wiki's been updated to reflect this, that's a link for that. The release link is down below. I'll put some specific release links as well as telling you to go to the releases page. As some people are still missing how to find the distinct download page from the releases page. Uh, which is a, just a, a github thing but um, yeah comments questions problems chuck them down below or on the github page or email me links are down below again and uh, yeah I'll, I'll catch you in the next one when we hope to have planes ready um, soon hopefully fingers crossed it will work I'll make sure um, in the meantime if you like this video give it a thumbs up if you don't give it a thumbs down don't forget to subscribe comment down below and if you can find that little bell icon click on it and it'll tell you when I'm uploading more stuff I will see you in the next one bye for now well you've made it to the end of the video so thanks once again for watching if you like what you saw then please consider subscribing and if you really like what you saw then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel